All right, here we go. Listen, I'm exposing Satan for his strategy to sideline you. And whether you believe it or not, there's an enemy, a spirit of darkness that's looking to destroy you. So you can just go on living oblivious or you can fight back. That's why today I'm dusting off an old message, giving it a facelift to show you Satan's strategy to sideline you is ultimately to distract you. Today on Church Door. Well, I don't know about you, but it seems like I'm always distracted by two things. Anything and everything. Seriously, I started working on this message and I literally felt like everything kept getting in the way of me getting it done. Whoa. And here's the thing, it's when God wants to do something big that Satan will do everything he can to sideline you from it. And God wants to do big things in and through you. Yet most of the time we, we just, we don't even see the schemes of the devil at work. Ah! Stop right there! That's why today I'm going to expose Satan for the true schemer he is. Satan absolutely hates it when people choose to love God and love other people over themselves because he himself failed at doing just that. He doesn't do it in an obvious way. Satan's strategy to sideline you is ultimately to distract you. Fucking squirrel! Because he knows a distracted Christian is an ineffective Christian, a Christian that poses no threat to his cause, which is the best case scenario for him. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. His mission is to devour as many people as he can before he meets his own impending doom the lake of fire. And we have to understand this is God's plan for Satan, not for you. Therefore, we have to push back. And how do we push back? Well, we do it by finding our focus in following Jesus. And, and I do mean focus, like a laser. A laser is an extremely focused beam of light that when at full power, it can cut right through the toughest of materials. Think about it. What would it be like if the church, every single follower of Jesus, focused all of our energies together to accomplish what God has called us to do, to make followers of Jesus in every tribe and every nation. Together, focused in God's light, God's love will become vibrantly clear to the entire world, like a beam shining in the darkness. Scotty, beam me up. So let me ask you, are you being distracted by Satan? The average American has 34 hours of leisure time each and every week. And let's be honest, these hours tend to be robbed away by trivial things. A little over six years ago, I began to realize how distracted I was by social media. I mean, I literally would mindlessly grab my phone and any idle moment I had, I'd be scrolling through social feeds. Realizing how unhealthy this was and how much time I was being robbed of, I made a conscious decision to focus. Your focus needs more focus. I deleted all my social media apps off my phone and I took my life Back. So if we're going to get focused as followers of Jesus, we have to stop wasting our time and we have to get intentional about pushing back on the schemes of the devil. We can do this by dedicating ourselves fully to the path that God has set before us. Each one of us has a race to run. And just like any good runner, there are many things to do in order to run that race well. A good runner trains and a good runner listens to their coaches. A good runner ultimately focuses on the lane that they've been put in to run. Now in the book of Hebrews, the writer also encourages the church with the same type of running metaphor. The church he was writing to was much like the rest of the church in the first century, and they were dealing with persecution and the threat of imprisonment. Now, most Christians in the West do not have the fear of imprisonment for their faith, but unfortunately, other brothers and sisters in Christ across this world still do. The challenges for us are not only to lift up those who experience the most extreme distractions of the devil, but that we would be faithful to run out our race well. 
And, and let's be real, persecution and imprisonment make our distractions look like small potatoes. So we must run this race with focus because who knows, one of these days, our situation just might change. And if we struggle to run the race well when the conditions of the race are much easier, do we really think we would run the race well when things are hard? How you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So let's dig into this encouragement in Hebrews, chapter 12, verse one. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. These verses are jam-packed with great stuff. That's why 12 words in, and I'm already stopping. In chapter 11 of Hebrews, the writer gave an infamous Hall of Faith Heroes chapter, and he reminds the church of all the great people of faith that have endured the race before us. Not only have they set the example for us, they continue to cheer us on. And, and why are they cheering us on? Well, they also know what it's like to struggle in the race. The Greek word for witness in these verses is martis, which may sound familiar to a word that you're familiar with, martyr. A martyr is a witness who has witnessed unto death. They have given their life for the cause. And if we plan to endure this race, we must surround ourselves by voices that are going all in. So, here I go, so what is one great way to focus on the race? It's through the right relationships. The voices that we listen to matter. The, the people we associate with, that matters too. And, and the people we allow to speak into our lives, it all ultimately matters. You see, we're relational beings. We're not created to be islands out on our own. God has put other followers into our life for a distinct reason, so that you can keep focused on the race and not grow weary. Now, who are the voices that you're allowing into your life? Are they cheering you on for the cause of Christ or are they voices that are keeping you sidelined? For some, it might be important to reevaluate the relationships that you call most important in your life. You know, look, maybe we should just like call this deal off because it seems to me that um, you're just not that good. Oh, really? This is why being part of a faithful community of followers is key. Watching this video is not enough. You must surround yourself with relationships in the church. So we wanna encourage you find a good home church. There you will find relationships that will challenge you, that will help you grow and go further in the race than you ever thought you could go. Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So the second best way to focus on the race is this. It's through recognizing that the struggle is real. So many Christians walk through life completely ignoring their sin or keeping sin around like a secret pet. Oftentimes it's the guilt of that sin that ultimately keeps us from facing it fully. We feel so guilty and we push it further and further and further into the recesses of our life. Yet all this does is make us ineffective in the race that we're called to run. We must call to light the sin that is in our life, and we don't have to do that on our own. James 5.14 says it like this, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. We can find healing from confessing our sins to each other. I have found this not to be easy at all. Most people are just too embarrassed to share their sin with other followers. Yet here's the thing, the people we would confess to also struggle with sin. And if we were just willing to recognize that the struggle is real, not just with me, but everybody, we might just find ourselves running the race more effectively when we become real with each other. So if you're one of those holier than thou Christians, just stop. Stop it, get some help. Even Paul was clear that sin was a struggle for him. And if the person who wrote the majority of the New Testament says there is a struggle there, then there's a struggle. And the quicker we can be honest about this, the quicker we can find healing. So finally, the last way to focus the race is through giving God the glory because he ultimately truly deserves it. 
Hebrews 12, 2 says this, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. Jesus, the Son of God, who was fully God, fully man, went and endured the cross. And why did he do this? He did it for us to be the perfecter of our faith. He opened the door to make our broken relationship with God right once again. Therefore, when we go to run this race that we are in, we run the race in honor of Jesus. There's Jesus. Huh? He's our inspiration. We model our lives after his selflessness and his sacrificial ways. We also honor Jesus by bringing our absolute best to the race that God has called us to run because ultimately he deserves it. Not that we desire glory for ourselves or to be seen, but that we desire that God smiles at what we're doing, that he's honored in and through everything that we say and do. If we want to destroy the distractions of the devil, we must first focus on the race God has given us to run. Recognizing the important relationships, the struggles that are real, and ultimately giving God the glory for the victory. Hey, thanks once again for joining us. We're so glad that you were here today. If you need prayer, we have a prayer team here. Just hit us down in the comments or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Help us promote great Christian content by subscribing to this channel. Go ahead and hit the notification bell so that every time we put out a piece of content, it's coming directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile. Go ahead and go to our website, rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and make a donation there. Every single donation that is made goes right Right back into helping people just like you take their next step with Jesus. Our prayer for you this week is that you would go and you would run the race that God has set before you. That you would not be sidelined by the schemes of the devil and that you would overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We can't wait to see you again next week.